Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 3, Episode 8, Thoughts. This episode is called Many Heads, One Tail. Excellent pun. Another episode I love, spoilers for the MCU leading up to and including this episode. No spoilers in this episode for anything after, anything MCU, well, anything period. Anything MCU that came out after this episode first premiered. So, yeah, they talk about the, the octopus symbol uh, symbolism for Hydra. And, you know, Grant is like, I mean, I, I like a good metaphor. I just, I don't want to, I don't want to eat an octopus. That's all. And I love the, the tension with, you know, for a while, like, it seems like, oh, Gideon Malik has all the power in this situation. And then the vault comes up and he's like, oh, crap. That. I didn't think he knew about that, you know. So, so just yeah, you know the the. But yeah, I think I think Malik is the one who says you know the vault is a myth or something like that, and then you know Grant says I know where it is or something like that, you know. But yeah, there's a very clear change in in power there, and I'm guessing. The people outside the room were were listening. Gideon had something on him, so they could listen in. And when Grant was like certain about the vault, that's when the decision was made. You know, so they they got ready and because because Gideon leaped like very soon after, like maybe a minute after that first minute and a half, something like that. And immediately the guys come to the to the door to kill Grant. So. Yeah. And yeah, great fight. Um the the I I like the fact that that Grant ends up running out of, of bullets and there's a physical fight near the end. Always love a a bill, billiard pool ball being used as a weapon. Cuz if you know, the the my my grandparents used to have a a pool table. Those things are like heavy, you know. If you've ever, if you're, if you find yourself near a, a pool table and you're in a fight and you've got to make like the the defining, you know, finishing blow, yeah, a pool ball will do it. And then we have the yeah, they they talk about you know what. The, the future is for, for Andrew, and if they, you know, Rosalind says she's hoping they'll be able to, to cure him, and let's see, yeah, Daisy makes the claim that if you plan a kiss, there's no, f you know, that physical intimacy, let's go, you know, there that takes the, the fun out of it, mm, agree to disagree. And let's see, then we have the, yeah, um, Mac asks Coulson, you know, is he sleeping with Rosalind? Which, yeah, you know, as you know, Coulson points out that you know, that's none of your business. And Mac is like, no, you know, it's not, I'm not asking for positions. I'm saying, you know, can, Rosalind Price, can we trust her? And we have the... Does that answer your concerns? That only raises more concerns! And Grant hasn't passed his pyro phase threatening to to burn and he goes for the face too like burning any part of the body is going to hurt from burning but burning the face that has the added thing of like well he you know for the rest of his life either either people are going to be able to see it or he's going to need a lot of painful treatments of his face in order you know so yeah and i like the detail that the person who talks is not the one who's about to be burned because that's the thing sometimes 
that kind of, you know, he, his empathy for the guy who's about to be burned overpowers him not wanting to, you know, obviously he doesn't want to tell Grant. Let's see, and, you know, he's he says afterwards, ah, oh, you guys, you know, you would have fit in great with my men. Meaning, he's not going to be recruiting them, he's going to kill them. <clears throat> and, yeah, he learns Zepcow is the one. There are many Strucker vaults. He needed to know the exact one. And, and I will say, like, that's a great... I don't know if that's from the comics, but certainly... The, the, the idea that... I can't believe I'm blanking on his name. I'll I'll have it momentarily. Uh, Von Strucker, Wolfgang Von Strucker. You know the the idea that he would have a vault, and there's some really important stuff in there, makes perfect sense. So yeah, and. I kind of it it was funny when the the um, let's see it's oh hold on I thought I muted that there we go um right so no one added it to the memorable quote so I'll try to I, th I think what Daisy said was let's get to ATCU's IT ASAP or something like that yeah I I love a good shortening like that and yeah and then we see the you know right before the supposed hacking of the ATCU you know the 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 there's two ATCU agents and they're talking about you know like some kind of TV show like oh you know great build up in that episode of Darlene Darlene, Darlene, Darlene. Now I I I do not know that show. And we have the um, okay. Moving on. Yeah, yeah. We see that the the oh right right yeah. Mac pretends to be, you know. He's like, oh, don't worry, we've got our best men on. And I love how different he sounds. Like this is phone voice, for for when he's he's pretending, you know, because he he does. He sounds like the kind of person you get in touch with. That it sounds like of a practiced like voice for for that sort of thing. Where you know normally that like the way he talks. Most of the time, it sounds like you know. Okay, yeah, this is this is an engineer. You know, he has a very kind of straightforward, and you know, he's very very confident. He knows that he knows all this stuff. So, you know, that's that's necessarily the vibe you want from if if you're calling someone for help. So this is a very different. Yeah, and he's like. We got our best, you know, our, our best people on it. And it's, you know, Lance and Bobby undercover with George Santos. Wow, he really, he really has been everywhere, hasn't he? And Daisy is feeding Lance the, the stuff he needs to say in order to, you know, be convincing as a hacker. You know, we really have to find other ways to flirt. Yeah, you seriously do. This is this is getting out of hand. I think you two might have a problem. And yeah, you know, um, Fitz confirms as he had theorized, Will was sacrificed. And yeah, Grant is still very charming when you know, with with people who don't know him. You know, the, there's the the flight attendant that you know, and and I will say, 
I aspire to be as smooth as, you know, she's like, oh, you know, I have everything under control up here. And he's like, what about your off time? Do you ever get completely out of control? Dude, that is a killer line. That, yeah, very, you know, and then, you know, he leans in and he whispers and her face just, she's more and more horrified and she's like scared. She, you know, she sits down, you know, uses the, the seatbelt to, to fasten it. Just, you know, like, holy crap. Just, excellent acting. And I really appreciate that choice from like a writing and directing perspective to not let us know what he said. Because like, we've heard him say many things that are deeply disturbing. We don't need to know the details of this exact one. And this allows us to focus entirely on her reaction. And that is, yeah, it's a it's a crash course in who Grant Ward is, how you know how awful he he can be. And I really he gets on the, the thing, you know, thank you saying thank you for flying flying Hydra and just, you know and and he he like has the door pop out and and you know flies out the 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 plane in midair with of course a parachute on and just yeah very very nicely done and it's that thing of yeah you know if he like if he lands with the plane that's well let's see was it that that was the only yeah maybe you can actually only get to there from above that would definitely make it much more difficult for for anyone to break into so yeah very clever and it's like you know oh well how did they do it you know way back when because we're told that hydra is really ancient well you know for i can imagine they they before they could fly they maybe construct well wait do we know if this vault is that anyway if there was you know they constructed a thing that you could climb into and and like climb down into and once helicopters were around they would fly a helicopter onto you know stuff like that and now this is the way to to get on there to get in there and then we have yeah you know Simmons says this is too much you're you're doing you're too good which is yeah you know that is a a natural reaction for that Oh, that was Mark Dacascus. Cool to see him, and yeah, I'm, I'm glad he's still around. Um, I, yeah, like he was, he was a thing in like the '90s. So that's very cool that he. I thought I recognized that face, and now seeing it on the, on the credit. Let's see. Oh, that's right. I've never actually. Yeah, I was thinking, what did I see him in? But I don't. I don't. I don't think I've actually seen him in anything. I've just heard, oh, he's in that, and you know, yeah, he has a a strong reputation. I'm glad I've finally finally gotten to to see him in in something. He was very very cool here, and then we have yeah. Um, Lance types like extremely slowly and he, he makes a cry. Oh, you know, I'm just trying to catch. You know, I just want to make sure your sluggish system can keep up. You know, just. And it's one of those things where, like, you know, I mean, they can't kick him out. They need his help. So he can he can get away with being this, this douche. And, like, the character, the alias he's taken on here knows that, you know, and. and Th you know, really relishes in being able to to stick it to the man. You know, yeah, he'll he'll take a paycheck from the man, but he's still gonna stick it to the man. So yeah, the the and and just and that is the thing. Like you, it's one thing that Daisy can feed him all this information, but you. If he's slow at typing, that's still gonna like. But thankfully, he does. You know, that's gonna raise red flags. But he doesn't have to do very much typing, and you know, yeah, he makes the the crack, and they're otherwise really convincing. You know, the fact that he's he can spew all this techno babble, 
which I can imagine. I, I, I couldn't follow all of it, but I can imagine a lot of it probably holds up, though Hollywood does not have the best track record with that sort of thing. But yeah, that's going to make a strong impression. So when, you know, once he sits down, the fact that he's typing slow, they're like, well, that's kind of weird, but, you know, he's, he's, if, if he hadn't really said anything and then he sits down, types slow, then it'd be like, okay, there's something wrong here. And then we have the, yeah, you know, well, you know, we're, we're in, all Lance has to do now is, you know, talk incessantly and, you know, just, yeah, take up time. And Bobby's like, oh, he excels at that. And, let's see. Yeah, I, I I appreciate the tension between Lincoln and and May. You know, uh, she she asked for you, so you better you gotta move on. You know, Lincoln doesn't know May, but yeah, she doesn't necessarily. She she kind of expects you to keep up more than you know. She's she's not the handholdy type, and uh, you know he's he's like okay, so here I I sit here. Okay, do I do I have to? Or anything, you know, just very, very fun. The writers, I mean, the cosmos wants us to be a part, and yeah, Gemma does love Will, but also loves, you know, it's a yeah, it's a classic love triangle kind of kind of situation, and you know, right after Gemma. You know, she doesn't say literally, I love you, but the word she says conveys that. So Fitz kisses her, and after he, you know, pulls back away, she leans in to kiss him. I quite appreciate, you know, there's so much American media where kissing is like, it's, it's the man who chooses when, and even who. And that's just, yeah. It's it's a toxic idea. You should only kiss someone when they want you to kiss them. And let's see, it honestly it felt like something out of like it's it's something that James Cameron has has done really well in uh, you know several of his movies. If you know if a man and a woman are going to kiss, it's the woman who initiates the kiss. Maybe and makes. Or at least makes clear that she would like to kiss the the man, which you know that's that's how it should be. I'm not saying that it can't be the man who like initiates the kiss, but he shouldn't do it if he's not confident that that's what she wants. So you know, very healthy way, very healthy depiction here, and yeah. You know, Bobby goes into the room and approaches, and, you know, we see Andrew, and then it's Gideon who walks up. Love that misdirection, because we thought, you know, we, we, we heard, oh, you know, this is, this is the room where Andrew is being held. Bobby goes in, cuts to Andrew, and then it's, it's Gideon walking up. Very, very nicely done. And, yeah. We see, you know, Bobby finds fish oil pills in there. And I love, Lance manages to annoy the guy until he actually leaves. Like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna go for a coffee. I'll have a tea. And the guy's like, oh my god, how badly do we need these computers? Is it, is it impossible for us to just stop using our computers? So I don't have to deal with this freaking guy anymore. Okay, make the make the coffee a double, triple, make it a triple, you know. And yeah, the they realize the ATCU are administering these pills to the people working for them, and what was it? Public public witnesses, something like that. Just like holy crap, you know, they're not trying to cure in humans they're trying to create more of them and let's see 
yeah, and, you know, Coulson, like, I really appreciate, because it starts out looking like, oh, you know, he's, he's showing Rosalind everything, this was what she wanted, you know, sharing intel, you know, so, so, she's, she's seeing the inside of this, you know, con containment unit, and then he has the door closed and locked, because, you know, she trusts him at this point, in, enough for this, at least, so, yeah. And, you know, he's like, you have to convince me you're not Hydra, or you're never leaving this room again. <laughs> and, yeah, she points out, did you stop trusting me when we had sex? Because that's really messed up. And, I like, you know, Lincoln at this point is like, okay, you're, you're, you're trying to torture me. You're like, you're flying in circles to work me and you know she comes out and says the reason I've been quiet for all this time is I've been trying to find the words to apologize to you for for Andrew and you know Lincoln is like I mean you put several bullets in him and saved me so you know but but yeah I really appreciate that and it is I, I did think I, I mean the moment that she said I want to go with him you know I was thinking She's gonna like try to get him, you know. I mean, I don't think that she would. May doesn't strike me as someone who would like hurt someone who didn't do something wrong in order to to just get you know work work out frustrations. But maybe she's you know for for one thing she could be furious with him for attacking Andrew. You know she has complicated emotions about this. He attacked Andrew pretty severely. You know, maybe she feels that he should have been able to stop Andrew. Maybe that's the angle. You know, there's a lot of different... But no, she wants to apologize because she feels... Like, essentially, she feels like, I should have, I should have seen this coming. I was close to him. I should have known that he was Lash. So, so yeah, very nicely done. Good, good surprise and, and misdirect, and it also does feel like that's the kind of thing, you know, May is not above apologizing. None of us should be. And, let's see. Um, right, then we have, yeah, <laughs> it's... Yeah, Lance has been able to, to remain undercover for a while. But then, okay, so I think, yeah, B Banks. Then Banks shows up, and it's like, okay, it's about to get Banks in here, and he knows Lance's face. So, you know, and, and the hood, I love the angle that really emphasizes, no, 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 you cannot see Lance's face when he's got the hood up, and you're seeing from, like, behind and from the side. But then, you know, off the hood, you were right not to trust me, you were wrong about why. And, you know, he, he, th poor guy just got coffee and now it's getting, you know, he threw it in his face. And, you know, Lance goes running down the hallway to, to catch up to, to Bobby and she's like, I can't show my way out of this one. Would you get here with my briefcase? You know, just, yeah, a lot of, a lot of fun. And I would just like to appreciate that. This entire time, th the entire time he was undercover, Lance has been walking around, um, you know, proud patriotic Americans, wearing a t-shirt that says, damn the Yanks. They say it's a free country. Just really appreciate it. And, and the, you know, yes, I let him choose the, the password, which was, God save the queen. Let's see. And... Yeah, you know, Colton points out your source either has to be S.H.I.E.L.D. or HYDRA, and you just told me, you know, a couple of minutes of screen time ago, that it's not S.H.I.E.L.D. And, yeah, I mean, I, Constance Zimmer, I've only seen her in two things, this and Good Morning Miami. In both of them, she's unlucky in love. And, let's see. Yeah, the the um, I I really do appreciate the the because there's a again I love a good turning point in a in a scene because it seems like you know oh Coulson's got her dead to rights 
So, you know, she's busted 100%, he knows. And then when he brings up, you're not trying to cure people, you're trying to turn them into inhuman. You're, you're trying to create new inhumans. The way, you know, like, immediately it shifts, because her face is like, what? No. What? No. You know, just completely... And and it's like, no, this is not an act. You can tell from right away. Like, Coulson doesn't accept it immediately. But we, the audience, are like, she's never done that before. She has never... She's always confident. She's lied a lot, but she's confident when she's lying. This is not a lie. And... Let's see... Yeah, very cool with the Inhuman. So, um, yeah, played by Mark Dacascus. Gaiera is apparently, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right, you know, him fighting Lance and Bobby, very cool, and I love the thing, oh yeah, this, so this is a list of all the, you know, scrolling through this list of all the Inhumans that, that the ATCU has, you know, gotten their hands on, oh, here's one that's not in stasis though, and it's, you know, yeah, so they are using, although I can imagine, this is another thing that Rosalind doesn't know, but the ATCU is is using at least one Inhuman as a weapon. And, yeah, very cool fight. I love the boomerang batons. You know, I, I like that in order to release the batons, which are, of course, quite dangerous, you know, it, it, like, it scans both of Bobby's wrists. So it's like, okay... There's no way for someone to get them out of there without her at least having her arms free. And let's be honest, it's Bobby Morse. That's enough. She doesn't need to... If she could be literally otherwise completely tied down and she'd still be able to fight off a room with just her, her hands and, and the batons. And... Yeah, you know, just really, really cool fight. I love the moment where she throws the batons at him and he stops them in midair and it's like... Is it too late for us to talk this through? You know, just because it's like, oh, crap. That's a... The tide just turned because how, you know... And, and you know, Hunter resolves it by going up behind him and smacking him in the back of the head. So, yeah. And you worried about me? Worry on the move. <laughs> because that is the thing. Like, what what exactly is he going to, to do to, to prove that he's, you know... He was called by Rosalind, who had talked to Coulson. And, yeah, very cool when the, you know, the, the um, ah, what's it called? The thing that, op um, yeah, you know, the, like the thing opens, and then a thing from below pushes up, and that's where they were, you know, and, and Melinda's May is like, I can't, I, I'm not seeing them anywhere, they're not, you know, oh, that's where they are, you know, very, very nicely done. And... Grant gets into the vault, and Gideon was waiting for him, and I love, it's such a power move. He's got his back turned, and he's like, okay, so let me just pour myself a little glass of liquor here. I'm very rarely impressed, you know, just like, he's not, because he could have, like, had a gun ready for, for, because clearly he knew, okay, Grant's on his way. You know, he could have set up a trap or something. But he was just waiting for him, and they're going to have a conversation. And it is this thing of, you know, Grant does want information out of Gideon, and they've had a working relationship up to this point, you know, until he sent people to kill him. So, yeah, you know, he's not going to just immediately shoot, even though we know Grant is not above shooting people. And the lore here, holy crap, this is... I. I can hardly wait, and I'm, you know, fortunate enough to only have to wait a day to, to watch the next episode, but holy crap, I, yeah, very, very cool that Hydra is much older than World War II, which does, of course, to be clear, that doesn't mean that they're not Nazis, it just means that they're, that's not the only thing they are, they're, you know, they started before the Nazis, but they were also Nazis. You know, during World War World War Two, and you know, still, but thousands of years ago, an inhuman was born. Sometimes even more frequently than that, 
crap, that doesn't work. Anyway, the, the, you know, yeah. He was going to be the leader of Hydra, but he was sent through the portal because people were so scared of him. You know, so this is, this is essentially like the apocalypse of the, the Inhumans. If we're going with like X-Men metaphors. And they're trying to get him back out of there. Yeah, that's, that's so freaking cool. And yeah, that's why this being is, you know, because it like, it, it can make you see what it wants you to see. It's, it's very Pennywise. And yeah, it makes a lot of sense for it to be an inhuman. And yeah, like if it can drive people to self-harm, you know, just by, by influencing them like that, yeah, that's extremely powerful, and you could see how this, how, how it could come to, to, like, rule the world. And Gideon and Grant are going to rule alongside it. It's just so cool. I love them tying this together, because I didn't see that coming. I did not realize that the 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 monolith was going to to like that hydra was was trying to use it to get back the the per and and you know yeah you know shield just accomplished something hydra's never you know that no one else has ever been able to do they brought someone back from there so that you know of course also means that grant is going to go back to you know he's yeah he's going to need to to get something from the, you know, from the team of, of S.H.I.E.L.D. agents we've been following. Yeah, very, very nicely done. And, yeah, we, we close on Grant and Andrew. And, you know, the, the thing of Grant is not the, the let's see. Um, he's going to let's see he's you know he's he's using something that's essentially mustard gas on Andrew to see how to bring the the beast out and yeah the, the idea of them being in control of the the um being in control of Lash is terrifying, you know, so, so just, yeah. And I like the detail that, you know, it's very Joss Whedon that, you know, bad person, in some ways, a, a very competent storyteller. This thing of, you know, oh, I'm, I'm not using knockout gas, I'm going to use sulfide, phiasmo, something. I know what it is, I, I know what it does, I just can't pronounce the name, you know, just... Yeah, and let's see. Yes, so some IMDb trivia for this episode. When Coulson is showing Price the Shield memorabilia, he says he has a real soft spot for the Golden Age. This is a reference to Marvel's Golden Age, where Shield was first created. Fly the Friendly Skies was the United Airlines advertising tagline from '65 to '96, which I think. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, that was what Ward, something he said on the intercom. And I think that, yeah, that is the, so let's see. Um, yeah, so in the, in the memorable quote section, um, yeah, some, someone added, you know, Lance saying, I pine for the days where we didn't have to fight bloody aliens. It's just not a fair fight. And Bobby evening the playing field with the batons. And the entire bit with, with Grant and the, the, the flight attendant and such. And Gideon Malik talking to, to Grant about 
the the uh, let's see the the thing of the the inhuman oh that's right yeah um the the that one inhuman was so fearsome that others were consumed with dread and so they banished it from the earth yeah the very clever and and yeah based on what will told us it did to his colleagues yeah i 100 percent believe that i like the the fact also that you know when Grant says, you ever find yourself completely out of control, she's she's receptive to it, of course, you know, saying, I'll be in Moscow soon enough for the day off, come see for yourself. Just, yeah. And I will close this video on the very cruel, harsh line by Grant to Andrew. May thinks I'm a monster, but you actually become one. Guess we know her type.